You may have seen in various places that we no longer need to provide surge protection devices with MCBs to protect them, including on this channel. So why is it then that some manufacturers like CP and QDIS are still protecting SPDs with MCBs? And why, in the case of CP and QDIS, is it using a 63 amp MCB instead of the more commonplace 32 amps? Well, let's clear up the confusion. Just before we get stuck in, if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, then click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate. If you're already watching it as part of that training package, then you must be the pride of your parents. So why do some manufacturers recommend MCB protection for SPDs, and even send them out pre-packaged with them installed side by side? Well, when you connect a parallel SPD into an installation, it acts as a passive device, meaning that when everything's operating as it should do, the SPD isn't actually doing anything. It's not drawing current to operate, and current will only flow through it when there's a surge in the voltage and the components inside start to act like that pressure relief valve and allow current to pass through, thus leveling off the short spike in voltage. So because the SPD doesn't consume current in normal operation like a typical load, the cables connecting it aren't sized against design current or the nominal rating of the protective device they're connected to, but rather they're sized against the surge currents the conductors need to handle. BSEN 61643 SPD product test standards require mains power SPDs to have in internal overload protection. This is usually achieved by a thermal disconnection device inside the SPD. It's usually a bit of solder holding a sprung contact together. When it gets too hot, the solder melts, the contacts open and disconnect the SPD. However, overload is only one type of fault that needs protecting against. There's also short circuit protection and it needs protecting against even for an SPD circuit by means of an overcurrent protective device. BS7671 specifically requires this in regulation 534.4.5.1. SPD installations shall be protected against overcurrent with respect to short circuit currents. This protection may be internal and or external to the SPD according to the manufacturer's instructions. So it is required and it is possible to have it built into the SPD which might be why some brands don't require an MCB for their SPDs or it may be that relying on the short circuit protection provided by the supply cutout fuse from the DNO. However some manufacturers prefer not to rely on this and recommend the use of a dedicated overcurrent protective device to create an additional layer of protection in the rare case that the SPD reaches an end of life event and becomes defective, creating a short circuit situation. Another benefit to using an MCB to protect the SPD is that it allows for isolation of the device, which is really handy to avoid false readings when testing, and also adds a layer of safety when removing and inserting the SPD module from its base during replacement. All SPDs will have a maximum nominal rating of overcurrent protective device that can offer protection. Looking at the data sheet for this one, you can see that it's 125 amps. But if we want to take advantage of that extra level of safety and convenience provided by the MCB, then we also need to take into account selectivity. There's no point protecting this with an MCB if the main fuse is going to trip out when there's a short circuit. A good rule of thumb is that if this MCB is half the size of the incoming fuse, then it's unlikely to trip. So because it could be protected by a 125 amp fuse, Half of that gives us 62.5, which is close enough to the 63 amp rating of this MCB, as makes no difference. In fact, even if the incoming fuse is 100 amps, the 63 amp MCB is still likely to operate rather than the fuse in that rare event of a short circuit in the SPD. The MCB could actually be smaller, all the way down to about 20 amps. It's unlikely to nuisance trip in the event of a voltage surge. Now, it may seem that the conductors connecting an SPD are a little undersized for a 63 amp protective device, so let's dive back into the regs and check we're doing it right. In regulation 534.4.10, under the heading Connecting Conductors of SPDs, we find the following direction. Conductors between SPDs and the main earthing terminal or the protective conductor shall have a cross-sectional area not less than 6mm squared copper or equivalent for type 2 SPDs installed at or near the origin of the installation, 16mm copper or equivalent for type 1 SPDs installed at or near the origin of the installation. So that seems beefy enough for the earthing conductor, but what about the line conductors? The regulation continues, referring to regulation 433.3.12, which outlines the circumstances in which you can emit overload protection, which is what we do with an SPD. Conductors connecting SPDs and the OCPDs to live conductors shall be rated to withstand the prospective short circuit current to be expected, 
and she'll have a cross-sectional area not less than 2.5 mm squared copper or equivalent for type 2 SPDs installed at or near the origin of the installation, 6 mm copper or equivalent for type 1 SPDs installed at or near the origin of the installation. The reason that the conductors can be so small is that they only conduct current for very short periods of time when in normal use. They do need to cope with the short circuit current that could flow in the event of a short circuit, but this current should only flow for a very brief period of time. However, in their commitment to going beyond the bare minimum required for safety, CPNQ just recommend a minimum cable size of at least 6mm in all instances to ensure that the short circuit overcurrent protective device has a lower energy let-through rating than the cables, with the added benefit that the larger cable size will also reduce voltage drop, so maximising the SPD's performance and so better protect sensitive equipment. So that's why some brands continue to use an MCB to protect their SPDs. And that brings us to the end of this series on circuit protection. If you're watching on our training platform then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and you'll receive your certificate for your CPD records. If you're watching on any of our social media channels then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate or click this video right here or the link in the description to see some awesome products and content from CPNQDIS. All that remains in this series is to say thank you very much for watching.